Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to the last and the 34th part of the chapter Thermodynamics. In this video, we are going to solve the last two problems of your NCRT textbook exercise. And with that, we'll finish this chapter. The question is, it is the 21st question of the sixth chapter, that is 6.21. The question reads that comment on the thermodynamic stability of NO gas given. The equations are given to you that half N2 plus half O2 gives you NO gas, all our gaseous reactants and products. And the enthalpy of this reaction is given to you, it is 90 kilojoules per mole. In the next reaction, NO reacts with oxygen to give you NO2. Again, gaseous reactants and products, but the reaction here, the enthalpy of this reaction is minus 74 kilojoules per mole. Now, looking at this data, we have to determine whether uh, NO is stable or is it not stable in comparison to the other substances present in the reaction. We know that in thermodynamics, whenever heat is given out by a system, it leads to a lower energy state and it leads to stability. Therefore, that is thermodynamically feasible. But if a reaction is endothermic, it is gaining energy, then the energy of the system is increasing. And if the energy of the system is increasing, that is thermodynamically unstable. And uh, so by the value of delta H, you get to know whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic. So this first reaction has a positive value of delta Rh, which means that energy is increasing. Therefore, this reaction is endothermic. Why here it's a negative value. It means that this much of heat was given out in this process. Therefore, this is an exothermic process. Now, how does this help us to determine whether NO is stable or not? If this is an endothermic process, it means that in this, the products are less stable than the reactants, right? In an endothermic process, the process is taking place where it is leading to a less thermodynamically stable product. So NO here is thermodynamically less stable than N2 and O2. In the next reaction, NO reacts with oxygen to give you NO2. And this reaction this time is exothermic which means it is thermodynamically feasible. It's a good reaction and it is leading to stability. So it is leading to stability of the product. And what is the product? The product is NO2, which means again, the second reaction also tells us that NO is unstable. So what do you predict from this? What would be your comment on the thermodynamic stability of NO in this? From these two reactions, we see that NO in the first reaction, formation of NO was non-feasible since it was an endothermic process. Therefore, it was less stable than the reactants. And in the second reaction, NO is less stable than the products. So what, is, what do you analyze from this? What do you conclude from this? You conclude that NO is actually less stable and which is the most stable? NO2 would be the most stable here. Why? Because NO is less stable than N2 and half O2, but NO, when it changes to this, it gives you NO2. So NO is comparatively unstable. Now the last question of this chapter. You have to calculate the entropy change in the surroundings when one mole of water in the liquid state is formed under standard conditions. When you say standard conditions, it means the temperature is 298 Kelvin. The enthalpy of formation is given to us. Now, you have to calculate the entropy change in the surroundings. You know, whatever reaction is taking place, that is the system. And whatever is around it is the surrounding. So when we say a reaction is uh, endothermic, it absorbed this much of energy. Where did it absorb that energy from? It absorbed the energy from the surroundings. So what would be the change in enthalpy of the surroundings? The surroundings lost that much of energy. If this is the energy gained by the system, then that is the energy lost by the surrounding. So when we are interested in the surroundings, we should be interested in the enthalpy not of the system because we've been given the enthalpy of formation of the system of this reaction formation of water is the enthalpy of formation of water is minus 286 kilojoules per mole it is a negative value means it is exothermic if it is exothermic it, what is the change enthalpy change in the surroundings 
if this much of heat was given out by the system this much of heat was absorbed by the surroundings so you only have to change the sign it would become 286 kilojoules per mole would be the amount of heat being given out by one mole of the reactants so we'd say this is the enthalpy change for the surrounding the only the sign changes and uh, what is delta s in terms of enthalpy we know delta s is equal to q upon t what is delta s it is q upon t and q is nothing but delta h so what is since we are talking of delta s of the surroundings q of the surroundings and the temperature of the surroundings since we said the temperature the conditions are uh, standard conditions therefore the temperature is 298 Kelvin which is stable and Q surroundings we've just calculated it is plus 286 kilojoules per mole is the temperature uh, is the Delta H for the surrounding and temperature is 298 Kelvin so from this you calculate you calculate the value of delta S and it will turn out to be 9, 0 0.9597 0 0.9597 kilojoules per mole per Kelvin right and since this is a very small number let's turn it into joules uh, multiply it by a thousand so it will be 959.7 joules per mole per Kelvin so that turns out to be the value of Delta is of the surroundings so with that I hope thermodynamics is now clear to you and I would uh, encourage you to solve as many problems as you can use different books find problems wherever you can and try to solve as many as you can to be well prepared for your examinations and if you found my video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning keep keep returning for more videos in chemistry so now we'll be starting with equilibrium thank you for watching and bye bye for now